Welcome to the cost reduction training about the five strategies to create a sustainable cost advantage. We are here to lower the cost base. So what's the problem and why is it important? Well, cost discipline is not a popular topic, but a necessary one for business management. And because costs naturally increase over time, most companies embark on periodic cost-cutting initiatives to reduce expenses through headcount reduction, capital expense elimination and project deferral. Such reactive approach is not only demoralizing but also largely ineffective, leaving most of those companies in a weaker position with costs bouncing back and competitiveness severely eroded. We don't want that. To do better, we need to do three things. We need to act early before getting into trouble. We need to go beyond short-term containment measures and address cost drivers at their core. This training course builds the critical skills that functional managers and business leaders need to lower the cost base and improve profitability in a significant and sustainable way. As a cost reduction professional, you will analyze the current structure, differentiate the strategically critical good costs from the non-essential bad costs, quantify healthy cost volume profit levels using logic trees, identify cost drivers and improvement levers, and develop the cost reduction roadmap. By applying the five cost reduction strategies, you will deliver significant savings in the short term and create a lasting cost advantage in the long term, while freeing up resources so they can be deployed for a more productive use. It's like cutting fat to build muscle. Roles for this course include sponsor, student and coach. The sponsor allocates resources and provides context, such as proliferating costs, lack of cash, declining profitability or the entrant of a low-cost competitor. The student, like you, invests time to develop the cost driver tree and implement the cost reduction roadmap. The coach, like me, evaluates progress, provides advice and gives feedback. Rather than employing the traditional cost-cutting approach, you will help your team or your client to develop solutions that create real impact. Not only by reducing bad costs and redefining requirements, but also by reallocating resources to unlock growth. A highly profitable journey to begin. Considering cost reductions, there are eight main cases. Number one, you experience cost pressure from a competitor. You lost volume because of a market shift or economic slowdown. Your company grew through acquisitions, causing an inflated overhead. You are dealing with the aftermath of a recent merger. Industry dynamics or regulatory reforms cause profit pressure. Your budget grew without achieving significant economies of scale. Your overhead is unnecessarily complex. Or your cost base significantly exceeds benchmarks. Cost inflators. If not controlled, costs naturally increase over time, mainly driven by the lack of information and human behavior. Here are some examples. Managers prefer to grow and expand, rather than to cut and reduce. 
value-driven thinking and behavior is often not encouraged and supported. Staying busy by expanding work to fill all the time available per Parkinson's law. Managers avoid the difficult decisions to reduce resources to match demand, especially when demand goes down. Cost is out of focus during good times. Building waste into products and processes. Cost reduction programs are often avoided as they could dampen morale. Adding fixed rather than variable resources to cope with peak demand. Adding inspection and sorting in an attempt to control quality. Excessive quality or excessive service levels in an attempt to oversatisfy customers. Excessive maintenance in fear of breakdowns due to the lack of risk cost knowledge. And finally, adding unpaid extras or unnecessary features due to lack of customer knowledge. As a first step, we are classifying costs into good and bad. Good costs are required to achieve objectives. They create value for the customer. They contribute to business success, such as production and service activities. That's a priority. Now, bad costs are not aligned with objectives. They do not serve the customer. They destroy value and waste resources, such as rework, expedites, defects, losses, and so on. Those are bad costs. Spending priorities. We are now prioritizing good costs into four categories. Category one, operations. This includes everything to keep the business running and the lights on. Also includes regulatory compliance with safety, legal and environmental requirements. It also includes replacing depreciated assets and also machines that are broken and need repair. Priority two, payback. Those are projects with short-term payback, where the return is almost certain, such as efficiency and quality improvements. Priority three, growth. This includes scaling a proven investment to accommodate a shift in volume or market. It also includes strategic inventory. Priority four, exploration. This includes early stage research, marketing events, and also intangibles such as goodwill and company image. And our cost reduction program is priority two because it generates short-term payback. To go further, we need a model to tackle costs systematically. There are five strategies. Strategy one, demand management. Strategy two, process efficiency. Strategy three, technology alignment. Strategy four, organizational agility. Strategy five, business effectiveness. And there are four tools we are going to use zero-based budgeting, activity-based costing, should cost modeling, and design to cost to ensure fit for purpose. We measure impact in material cost, people cost, 
failure cost and structure cost. And we employ skills, value analysis, performance management and problem solving. And in the middle is the engine, consists of processes, systems and people. It's a continuous process to reduce costs and achieve cost excellence. We are now reviewing the five cost reduction strategies. They define what to tackle. There is the strategy, the content of the strategy and the timeline for implementation. Number one, demand management. It focuses on financial metrics to minimize spend according to demand. Over a three month period implemented in weekly sprints. Number two, process efficiency. It focuses on reducing waste, variability and inflexibility over a period of six months executed in monthly sprints. Number three, technology alignment. It focuses on assets and technology and automation. It aligns configuration to requirements. Over a period of one year, executed in quarterly sprints. Number four, organizational agility. It focuses on building skills and simplifying the structure over a period of two years executed in semi-annual rollouts. Number five, business effectiveness. It evolves the strategy and the structure over a period of four years in annual rollouts. Between each strategy, there's a factor two in time. So it goes from three months, six months, one year, two years and four years. All those elements can be executed in parallel and also sequentially. Cost reduction tactics. They define how to reduce costs. And here are the top 10. Eliminating activities that have not been requested and have no clear benefit. Rationalizing quality and service levels to prevent overprocessing, such as excessive precision and excessive amount. Bundling products and services together as single packaged units so they can be purchased at discounted prices. Stabilizing processes to establish capability, CPK. Preventing defects, rework, double handling and backflow. Standardizing processes to get the same result every time. Prevent variations between people and shifts. Balancing resources to demand to reduce overload and idling and stress and boredom. It requires cross-skilling and flexibilizing resources for dynamic allocation. Simplifying products through modularization and platforms and streamlining workflow by taking out unnecessary steps and unused features. Automating activities to reduce labor content using fixed, programmable and flexible automation devices. Outsourcing of non-core activities to lower cost specialists rather than doing everything in-house. And centralizing resources and information in one location to reduce duplication and to concentrate knowledge and authority. Developing the cost reduction program, let's map it. There are cost reduction elements. Those are strategies such as demand management, process efficiency, technology alignment, organizational agility and business effectiveness. We know about them. 
There are also tactics, the 10 tactics, to eliminate, rationalize, bundle, stabilize, standardize, balance, simplify, automate, outsource, and centralize. And we can see that to eliminate, rationalize, and bundle, these three tactics are elements of the first strategy for demand management. Process efficiency involves to stabilize, standardize, balance, and simplify processes. Then there's technology alignment. It focuses on smart automation, organizational agility, on outsourcing and cross-skilling, and business effectiveness on centralizing activities and evolving the business model. So there, is, uh, there are three types of approaches. So the phase one is cost cutting. It's reactive, it focuses on uh, cutting spending, it has a short-term impact. Then followed by cost optimization. It's systematic, programmatic. Those are improvements for the medium term. And finally, value ch generation. That's visionary, focuses on partnerships with long-term impact. Demand management tactics. Those are demand-driven resource allocation by a return on investment to eliminate organizational slack. Bundling activities to reduce labor content. Batch size alignment to match production, distribution, and consumption pattern. Volume bundling and category management to get a discount. Volume shift to best price supplier. Global sourcing, shift to low cost country. Target pricing and price renegotiation. Supplier qualification and second tier sourcing. Payment terms, account payable. Multi-year contracts and life cycle contracts. Purchasing cooperation and mutualizing. Kairetsu. Transport optimization by frequency and amount. E-auction tendering. And purchasing controls to prevent maverick buying. Basically bypassing the purchasing process. Second. Process efficiency tactics. Those are defect reduction and error proofing, pokayoke. Process capability, CP and CPK. Availability and reliability of tools and equipment. Overall equipment effectiveness, OEE. And overall process effectiveness, OPE, for manual processes. And overall factory effectiveness, OFE, for the entire plant. Workload leveling to reduce idling and overload. Quality and service level rationalization. Specification downgrading to prevent overprocessing. Process streamlining, complexity reduction and simplification. Standardization using OPLs, SLAs, and SOPs. So one-point lessons, service level agreements, and standard operating procedures. Modularization and platforming. And shared service center to consolidate back office work. And also make by optimizations. Third, technology alignment tactics. Those are inventory adjustment by risk and velocity, business-driven capex allocation by return on investment, decisions based on total cost of ownership, rationalization of support and maintenance activities, consolidation of facilities, right-sizing capacity to demand, process and technology harmonization, System supplier development, early customer involvement, joint development programs using Agile, 
Concept Competition, Concurrent Engineering, Design for Manufacturing and Assembly, Robotic Process Automation, Consignment Warehousing, Vendor Managed Inventory, and System Design based on Technical Benchmarking. Fourth, Organizational Agility Tactics. Right-sizing staff to meet demand. Realignment based on contributions. Business value add. Job design based on requirements. Job profile and pay level harmonization. Joint development with supplier. Centralization of support functions. Roles and responsibilities standardization. Streamlining of reporting. Flatten the hierarchy. Reduction of layers. Increasing spans. Spans of control. Consolidation of duplicate organizations. Incentive scheme optimization. Organizational redesign based on benchmarking. Tighten bonus, tougher targets and reduce payouts. Shift from full-time to part-time or contractor. Fifth, business effectiveness tactics. Those are evolving the business model, Value-driven business proposition, altering the company's value add. Centralized versus decentralized control. Outsourcing of non-core manufacturing and service activities. Collaboration groups, Kairetsu. Scope shift. Business model realignment. Footprint rationalization. Joint ventures for scalability. Acquisitions for greater control. Rationalize product and service portfolios. To create an effective cost structure, we need a zero-based design. How does this work? We start with the current setup. And let's look first how the traditional cost-cutting approach works. It justifies what to remove. It's based on the current budget and setup. It drives incremental improvements only. And strategic needs are not adequately funded. So it means we are cutting the muscle. And there's a high risk of cost bounce back. So all these things are not very favorable. There's a better way. Let's start with the survival minimum that's based on the clean sheet target costing. It defines what is required to survive and only that. It's based on an ideal assumption, on a bare bone structure and it creates an aspirational limit that we will never achieve. But it's because it's an ideal. From there, we develop the, uh, the strategic optimum, the zero-based design. So we justify what to add, what to add in addition to the survival minimum to meet strategic goals. It's based on the survival optimum. It focuses on reallocating resources where they can be valuable. Wastes are designed out, removed from the system. And sustainability is built in because it's a bottom-up design. Improving financial processes. And we are comparing traditional budgeting with zero-based budgeting. 
The allocation is static, based on annual budget cycles, traditionally. And this is changing to allocation is dynamic, based on real-time information. Targets and accountabilities are set per annual planning cycle. Changing to targets and accountabilities follow evolving business needs. Mid-cycle changes are not desired, causing resistance. Versus continuous change is desired to keep information current. Hands-off approach. Over and under spending will cancel out eventually. That's the assumption. Versus hands-on approach. Every cost item is carefully planned and closely managed. Descriptive cost items. A line of text. For example, product design work. Versus calculated cost items. There's a formula. For example, five designs multiplied $70,000 each. Focused initiative with high level plan and milestones, traditional costing, versus detailed roadmap tracks daily progress and monthly impact. Investments and expenses are judged differently versus investments and expenses are judged by return on investment. The same method. Unclear accountability because many influencers per cost item versus full accountability for each cost item by driver and owner. So what's the difference between cost cutting and sustainable cost reduction? In cost cutting, the focus is on justifying what to remove. In sustainable cost reduction is justifying what to keep. Very different. There's a focused initiative on selected cost areas versus full scope, challenging every single cost area. And the focus in the traditional cost cutting is improving how to do things. Focus on efficiency. Versus improving what to do. Maybe we need to do less or different things. And how to do those activities. Focus on efficiency. Cost analysis. We are now analyzing the cost of a service business by drawing the cost tree to identify cost levers that help us to reduce the overall cost base. We're starting with the total cost per service unit. This consists of overhead cost plus direct labor cost. An overhead cost is the product of management hours per unit multiplied by the management hourly cost rate. The management hours per unit is the result of management hours total divided by the number of units delivered. The total management hours is the sum of business development, planning and control, exception handling, people development, sales and administration, all the management activities. The direct labor cost per unit is the product of direct labor hourly rate multiplied by the direct labor hours per unit. And the direct labor hourly rate is a function of the requirements. The higher the requirements, the more expensive the people. The higher the capability of the people, the more, the higher is uh, the direct labor hourly rate. And it's also a function of outsourcing how much of the activities are done in-house and how many of those activities are done outside by specialists. The direct labor hours per unit is a function of complexity and efficiency. 
And the complexity is a function of number of deliveries, how often I need to deliver something to the customer. And also the number of deliverables. Those are the specification points, the critical points, the test points. The CTQ is critical to quality points. And the number of process steps that I need to go through to deliver the service. And the efficiency is a function of quality, performance or speed, and resource availability. Now we can influence those cost drivers in several ways. For example, we do a service level rationalization to adjust service level to the requirements of the customer, to not over deliver. We perform a variability reduction of the service processes. We do error proofing and process standardization. This allows us to, for example, to hire lower cost people to perform the service. As a result, quality level goes up and speed goes up as well because standardization. Number of deliveries goes down because we right-sized it uh, to customer needs. Number of deliverables also goes down because we right-sized the quality to customer needs and the number of process steps because we reduce complexity. Planning on control, uh, activities go down because we have less to control and less exception handling because we have higher degree of standardization. As a result, the management hours required goes down. This reduces the management hours per unit and as a result, the total cost per unit goes down. At the same time, on the direct labor front, complexity goes down, efficiency goes up, as a result, direct labor hours per unit goes down and total cost per unit is affected, it also goes down. Overall, we reduced the cost base. We have come to an end and I hope you enjoyed this introduction into systematic cost reduction. All I can recommend you now is Go to leanmap.com slash academy, complete the course, apply your knowledge and earn your certificate. This will be the beginning of an exciting journey and a very profitable investment. Thanks for listening. This was Jörg Münzing from Leanmap.